Good morning and welcome to part one of the armor of God. This week we're going to go through what it means to have the armor of God. And, and we're going to start with an article about the armor of God and a couple of the things I wanted to look at today. And then each day it's going to go to like a different theme of pieces of the armor of God. So stay tuned to this. Everything that, everything that, everything that has been free, the Lord. Everything that, everything that, everything. Father, we come before you as we learn about what the armor of God is. Can we let everything that is within us praise you, O Lord? When we're happy, when we're sad, when we're grieving of a lost one, when we're not getting our way, can we be able to move forward in the mountains and valleys called our life and do the very things that you called us to do? Are we able to help those and promote those others before ourselves so that you may be glorified in our actions and deeds. You look down from heaven and melt me with your gaze. Then you come down from heaven. Enwrap me with your wings And it makes me feel loved again So close in your arms And it makes me feel home again So close to your heart God, hear our prayers as we reach out to you for strength. God, hear our prayers as we call on your name. God, hear our prayers. Face. Look down from heaven 
again and wrap your arms around us we fall down we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus the greatness of your mercy and love had the feet of Jesus and we cry holy, holy, holy and we cry holy, holy, holy and we cry holy, holy, holy We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to guide and direct our paths today as we read your word and what your word does to our minds and hearts today is it enwraps us in places where you want us to go. Psalm 18 verses 8 and 10. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and flew. And he flew with the wings of the wind. Can't you see God when it finally is the end of days? Or maybe you're seeing this in, the, in your life. When you finally repent, that like that first time. It's like this um, amazing moment that God comes in your life. And all the old passes away and then the new comes into your life. And God transforms you. Proverbs 6, 20, My son, keep your father's command. Do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you wake, they will speak with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. This life we run into with this armor that we're going to have to put on that we'll be learning all week long. It is in such a way that God wants to transform our lives. And if you studied anything about the military or sports or even musicians or someone who studies for a test, what do you have to do? You have to practice, right? You have practice runs of what's going to happen day in and day out for the final game, for the final battle. And you practice these movements. You practice these things to say, these things to wear. And you're not always in a continuous time of war. But as we learn later in the week, you learn about the devil roaring like a lion and wanting to devour whoever he can. And he's coming after us every day. The difference between the armor of God in a football game and a military march is people practice stuff. This is no practice. Once you get saved and you start learning about God, what happens in your life is God will in, dwell into your hearts and your minds and you'll learn about all these things that come to you. From the devil himself and his demons to distract you and to take out your life. And it's a day-by-day progression. Now, mind you, of course, the same battle doesn't happen every single day. It's a different tactic every day. 
It's a different situation every day. 1 Corinthians 9.24 In a race, everyone runs, but the one person gets the first prize. So run your race to win. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is a little extra. A family moved into a new apartment and found themselves besieged by salesmen wanting them to sign up from everything from laundry to life surgeon, sur, uh, service, insurance, vacuums, magazines, you name it. One day, a dairy man came to the house offering. They said, no, my husband doesn't want any milk. We'll be glad to deliver it every morning for cooking. That's more than I need. And she tries to close the door. She says, well, ma'am, what about some cream? What are, uh, Berries are now. And she answered, no, we never use cream. And the dairy man walks away. And slowly, the woman congratulates herself on her resistance. The following morning, there's a knock on the door again. The same dairy person, again, with a bowl of ripe strawberries in one hand and a half a pint of cream in the other. Lady, he said, I'm, I'm thinking here, if you never use cream on berries, you're missing out on a lot of life. And, and needless to say, he delivered to her house every day after. He saw a need. He figured out a way to reach what was happening. He brought the item in question before her, and she didn't question when met with resistance, a leader does not use creativity and kindness to overcome obstacles. Don't take no for an answer. Just approach the issue from a different angle. God is a creative God, and he'll give you a little extra as you move on in your life. That's just one take of it. In 1844, the Vidal versus Giard Executor's Justice Joseph story upheld the use of the Bible in teaching of Christian moral principles in a city-run school. In this case, the permitted the teaching of Christian religion, not just by the members of the clergy, but the, uh, the story's opinion is that Gerard was not derogatory to the Christian religion resting on two determinations. Number one, lay person was capable of teaching general principles of Christianity. Why may not laymen instruct in the general principles of Christianity as well as ecclesiastics? Second, Gerard permitted the teaching of the Bible in school. And here's what was said. Why not? Why may not the Bible, especially the New Testament, without note or comment be read and taught as a divine revelation? In general, precepts expounded as evidence explained its glorious principles of mortality and culminated. Where can the purest Principles of mortality be learned so clearly or so perfectly as from the New Testament. Where are so belivalence, the love of truth, sobriety, and industry, so powerfully and irresistibly indoculated in the sacred volume? Now, that was a fight of putting on the armor and wanting to know how to effectively communicate a message that needed to go out to a community. Now I want to read to you. This is in Crosswalk.com. It's written by Don Wilson about how the armor of God was meant for crisis is like the coronavirus. Miranda read this and said, this will be great to share. It talks about the pandemic and Christians needing the strategy for coping physically, but also spiritually and mentally and emotionally. We might think about the physical danger, the viral disease it talks about. You know, it talks about the president speaking about the war on the invisible enemy that we, our earthly eyes, don't see without a microscope. And then even still, if you want to get even further in the atomized level, you've got to get even deeper. We can't see it. It's just like the devil. You can't see Satan. And the Bible says our adversary, as I said a minute ago, 1 Peter 5, 8, our adversary is seeking to people to devour. We as a Christian should put on the armor of light and clothe ourselves with Christ and suit up the armor of God. That's Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. It's not enough to know about what the armor is, it says, and we don't need to miss a piece. It says put on the full armor of God. So with that said, what is it that God is trying to tell us today with the armor of God? Hmm? What is he wanting to do in our life? How is he wanting to transform 
this thing that we call our life in such a way that God wants to effectively move in our life. So it talks about being strong in the Lord. Again, that's Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord with his mighty power. You can face anything in that situation. But then 1 Corinthians 16.13 says, To be on guard and stand firm in the faith. And my first sermon was about faith, and I kind of mentioned something about this when I revised it with the Avengers, and I said, what does it mean to be on guard? And I use an example of a shield, because it talks about the fiery arrows of the devil coming to shoot at you. Well, by having humility, that helps have a shield. By having the knowledge of what you're supposed to do, that has a shield. By knowing how to quote the word when the devil attacks you, that turns into a shield. When you can't physically see and hear, that's faith. That's a shield. And like Ephesians 6, 12 says, we're not fighting against flesh and blood here. We're not fighting against the normal things. Now, of course, we will have to possibly interact with other human beings. Whether it's our family, friends, co-workers, acquaintances, traffic, trying to fit, find find a piece of paper. Like I was looking for a song this morning. I had an opportunity when trying to find the song this morning. Do I choose a path of being disappointed because I couldn't find something where I put it? Or do I look at it as, well, maybe I'm supposed to read and do something different. So I started looking a different way. Putting on the belt of truth. Knowing what truth really means. Knowing what God wants to do in our life. Knowing that our circumstances are not the end game for us. The truth is that God is the victor in our lives no matter what is happening. So then we talk about breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. Okay? And we're talking about how we can prevent others from stumbling. It's by what kind of, and I've said before, what kind of salt? Are we seasoned with salt? Because the Bible talks about us being the salt of the earth. And for us to be a breastplate of righteousness, we should be going out doing things that are positive to help people. That is in line with the word of God. The devil has gotten so wise, he knows how to do positive things too. So you have to understand the difference. He's not wanting us to brag and talk about all these great things that we're doing and shooting off all our social media. Well, I gave out this, I gave out that, and done this, done this, done that. No. It talks about having a living sacrifice as Romans 12, 1 and 2 does. And those filthy rags, Jeremiah 23, 6, it's equivalent to women with tampons and pads today. That's what the conversation was about. Now, shoes of feet is like Ephesians 6, 15. About the gospel of peace and about how God wants us to be stepping into the realm of knowing, if you know the truth, then you can have peace. But sometimes that peace requires faith, not actually seeing the end result that you want. Or the result that you want in that moment. And to get the peace that goes beyond all understanding. And to be content in any and every situation. You have to jump into what God is doing. And does that mean you're not going to falter in any of these points? Of course you will at some point. So then finally, taking up the shield of faith. Ephesians 6.16 Now, when you're in a battle, God will give you power in such a way that it won't make any sense to those around you. How are you doing what you're doing? How is this happening? Which way is this going? What's going on? So on and so forth. God will transform these situations for you. When you finally say, God, I'm moving myself out of the way. I need this peace. I you know." To deal with the situation, start saying something positive to people. It gets you out of the way. The devil is always looking for someone to devour. So if you're not the focal point or the person they want you to be mad about, then you get rid of that. You defect 
the situation that occurs. And that can make someone angry, but you got to be focused. You got to be focused on what God wants to do here. Then the helmet of salvation. We're talking about the hope of what God does. When there's a crisis and everything's going around, can we do what Jesus did when the sea was rough? He was just sleeping. I mean, think about it. How many of y'all will be able to sleep when you're rocking around in your boat like that? And you know, you know, I can imagine they walk, you know, they that whole, you know, like that when something scares you. And then you see what's going on. I'm all like, can we realize who we are in Christ and what God wants to do with it? Again, remembering where we came from and what God wanted to do in our life. That we may be struggling, but you don't need to succumb to fear like we talked about in the Psalms. And the sword of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming into your life. Because it talks about the Bible is stronger than a two-edged sword. That can divide the truth. Again, as I mentioned the other day, one of my minister friends was saying in one of his sermons, he said this phrase. He said, when was the last time when you were tempted to do something wrong? Or you did do something wrong. You've already said, God, I'm sorry. Did you ever go the next step and say, it is written and read out loud or said in your head this particular verse regarding your personal situation? And there's power in prayer. Again, we're going to be doing some studies on how to put on these pieces of armor and how to pray and what it means to pray and, and, and those kinds of things because I feel that a lot of people don't have the skill set needed to move to the next level of their body of Christ and that's what some of these messages are going to be about. I want you to understand that the feelings and the things that happen in our life are only, can, are only temporary. They're not, they're not a permanent lasting event in our life. They don't have to be. Situations in our life. Of course, when you're 7 years old and 13 and 20, some things can be permanent. And they don't all have to be about death. People can make decisions that can alter the course of your future. So then if your course future is changed then it isn't the course that you need to be worried about. You have to worry about how you feel about it. You have to worry about what you're going to do with the new course. Can you redirect the course back to where you originally wanted to go? And if not, what is the new fresh idea that God has for you today? Again, when it comes to seeing the light at the end of this tunnel, because we're talking about states and places open up in May and June. We have to make plans. Again, this goes back to what I said at the beginning. Those that fight in battle, they practice. Those that are in music, they practice. Those that are in sports, they practice. And the devil is looking around for anyone to devour based on any kind of thing. And then you put in the human element and how humans react to situations and things. And people get memories and emotions and things can tie in across the board. So my question to you right now, are you prepared for any battle that might come your way? You may not be facing death today. You may not be facing homelessness today. Or a loss of a job. Or a loss of a loved one. But there are different things that can come in your life and totally stop you in your tracks. And people can see what you're saying and doing. And it will ruin your not only your reputation, but it will ruin your relationship with God. 
Now, the same point. When you start putting on this armor of God, you're going to have people mock you. And some people might make fun of you and discount you and discredit you and not believe anything that you have to say. So I have to ask you today. What examples are in your life? This is the challenge I want you to look at. What examples are in your life today that you need to put on the different pieces of the armor of God? I want you to write that out for your devotional time today as you continue to dig into these verses. And then we're going to go through each piece each day and dig more into it. But for right now, I wanted to ask the question, where is your weak point? Now, I don't need to necessarily know this. You start with God, your Father, Jesus Christ. And then you can go to your friends, your family, your ministers in your life, worship leaders, deacons, whomever else is in your life. If you don't have anyone in your life like that, let us work together to find someone who can help you have that kind of person in your life. Because God wants to do the miraculous in your life and transform your life in such a way that you'll never be the same. And this piece of the armor of God, it's that moment. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for what you've done in our lives, how we're learning about what the armor of God means, how we can stand up and resist the devil. And I pray, God, that we can come up with ideas of what we need to do to fix the missing pieces in our life. Lord, help us identify the weak points in our life right now in the armor of God in such a way that we can articulate the message to the people that can help us the most. Because it says in your word that you sent two out to spread to others. And it says in your word, Lord Jesus, that you effectively were training people together to work together for a common good. And that there are times where when we pray to you, Lord, you actually send people to us to help us. So God, we pray for those people that they'll be prepared to help us go into the path and the guidance of the direction that you need us to go and that we'll accept the constructive criticism and move to the next point that you want us to do. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you and we'll see you tomorrow.